First Epistle of John, Lesson 1, 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. In this first of 15 lessons on the New Testament book of 1 John, we shall look at the following eight matters. First, the English Standard Version of the text of 1 John 1, 1 through 4. Secondly, the Greek text of the passage, noting variant readings from ancient manuscripts. Three, a sample outline of the passage for preachers and teachers. Four, some phrases in the passage that have parallels in the Gospel of John. Some important words from the passage and their historical meaning follow. And then sixthly, some teachable observations and summaries that you might find helpful. Seven, some historical Christian doctrines that the passage contains. And lastly, some suggestions for Christians who want to apply the passage in their life. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. 1 John 1, 1 through 1-4 was well preserved through twenty centuries of copying, being attested by scores of Greek manuscripts. Nevertheless, a few scribes made tiny changes. These include the following. In verse 2, in the 4th and 10th centuries, scribes inserted that which before the phrase we have seen. In verse 3, from the 10th century, some scribes omitted the word also from the phrase we proclaim also to you. From the 5th century, some others omitted and from the phrase and indeed. In verse 4, from the 4th century, some scribes modified the phrase we are writing to read we are writing to you. By the 4th century, some scribes wrote that our joy, whilst others wrote, that your joy. Those who wrote our joy may have recalled the promise that Jesus made to his apostles in John 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, apostles, that your joy may be full. Those who wrote your joy may have recalled Jesus' promise in John 16:24. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full, which employs the exact same Greek words and grammar as found in 1 John chapter 1. This outline derives from a discourse analysis of the four verses, noting recurring words, themes, and logic. The first recipients and readers of this epistle of 1 John knew John and his teaching. They were so familiar with the Gospel of John that they understood what he meant by the terms beginning, word, life, witness, and joy, along with the titles Father and Son. In verse 1, by writing that which we have seen and heard, instead of he whom we have seen and heard, John was referring first to what Jesus was, 
before he talks about who he was. The beginning refers either to all of eternity past or to the act of creation when the Son of God was already present. The term word refers to who Jesus was, that is, God's eternal mind or logos that became human when God spoke. Again, the life refers to Jesus who lives eternally as God and can give his life to human beings. Thus everlasting life also refers to Jesus who has existed eternally as God and can enable human beings to live forever with him. The Father refers to God who exists eternally, invisible, powerful, just, and loving. Whereas the Son refers to God who exists eternally, became human, and conquered human death. The pronoun we in this passage refers to the eyewitnesses who had spent three or four years with Jesus before his death and forty days with him after his resurrection. Fellowship in this passage consists of all that Jesus shared from God with his apostles and which the apostles were able to share with us as we learn their scriptures. Whilst preaching or teaching this passage, you may wish to make a few observations. For example, the Apostles' experience of the historical Jesus. John wrote, We have heard, that is, we remember what Jesus said and taught. We have seen, that is, we remember his kind acts and miraculous deeds. We looked upon, that is, we beheld Jesus at his baptism and at his transfiguration when we heard the voice of God. And our hands have touched, that is, we felt Jesus' physical body after he rose from death. Here are eight phases of Jesus' career, that is, how God revealed Jesus to the world. First, he was with God the Father forever. Secondly, he was from the beginning, as creator of the world. Three, he was made manifest, that is, by his incarnation, becoming a human being. Fourthly, we heard him teach. Five, we saw his miracles. 6. We looked upon him at his baptism and his transfiguration. 7. We touched him with our hands following his resurrection, his return to life. And 8. We have fellowship with Jesus the Son and with the Father. Jesus had commanded his apostles to be his witnesses to all nations. So John wrote, We testify to it. That is, the apostles recount exactly what they had heard and seen. And John wrote the Gospel of John. Then we proclaim to you. That is, the apostles kept on talking about these things as long as they lived. And we are writing these things. That is, the book of 1 John has become part of the New Testament. If there is time and interest, consider describing what we believers do with Scripture. First, we compare the ancient Greek manuscript copies. Secondly, we translate the Greek into our own languages. Thirdly, we make Bible translations widely available to everyone. Fourthly, we read, study, and understand each part of the Bible. Fifthly, we believe Jesus' promises and we obey his commandments. Sixthly, we preach, teach, and explain the Bible to others who want to learn. And seventhly, 
we defend the Bible against liars and religions that deny it. There are seven historic Christian doctrines that you can teach from 1 John, these first four verses, to seekers and to believers. For example, divine revelation. God has chosen to reveal himself to human beings in many ways, through the creation, through conscience, through meditation, through visions. More importantly, God has revealed himself through Jesus Christ and through his apostles' testimony about him. Secondly, the unity of God. The one true God exists eternally as the Father and as the Son. The Father and the Son have spoken to each other forever, and when the Son came into the world as a human being, they continued to speak to each other. Thirdly, the incarnation of God, that is, the Son of God was manifested to human beings when he was born as a human being whilst remaining God. Fourthly, apostolic testimony. The apostles followed Jesus for three or four years, saw his miracles, watched him die on a cross, and spent forty days with him after he rose back to life and have written about it. They did not have dreams about angels or demons that talked to them. They did not borrow from other religions their traditions, myths, or scriptures. They did not sit alone meditating and thinking up new ideas, nor did they conspire or plot together to start a new religion. Fifthly, the doctrine of Holy Scripture. The Apostle John eventually wrote down his testimony in the Gospel of John, and he wrote 1 John to Christians. These books are now part of the New Testament of the Bible. Christians accept these writings as having authority in all that they believe and do. Sixthly, fellowship with God. John had received from God all that God had to give him, and John wrote 1 John so that we too may receive all that God has for us. And seventhly, spiritual joy. Jesus promised joy to his apostles, and John found even more joy in sharing with fellow Christians. To this day, generous Christians remain the most joyful. As you help believers apply this book to their own life, consider the following. If you lead a small group or a house church, then have the participants read the passage and then pose these queries. What have you learnt from this passage about God? What have you learnt about Jesus? What have you learnt from this passage about the Bible? And what promises has God made to us who learn from 1 John? Demonstrate for believers how to hold a regular time with family members to learn from 1 John and to pray one for another. Teach others what you are learning from 1 John. Lead a small group or house church to learn from 1 John. Make plans together to provide Gospels, New Testaments, or Bibles to those who have none. Be ready to explain to non-Christians that faith in Jesus comes through eyewitnesses whose testimony about him is better than what men say who never saw or heard Jesus. You may download a written script for this lesson at onejohn.cura.com. Dot download. Please read five times 1 John 1 5 through 2 2 before you view the next video lesson. Please leave comments or queries below or write to me at the download site. I shall try to reply to you by email or here online.